Good evening here are tonight's top stories. Tragedy struck as a pedestrian was fatally struck when a minibus collided with a house in Yitflucht. Additionally, there's been an appointment of new leadership at the Guyana Energy Conference and Supply Chain Expo. Furthermore, three individuals were injured in an Easter Monday brawl at Perseverance Beach. President Ali held a meeting with energy sector stakeholders, expressing dissatisfaction with GPL's performance. Two men have been charged and remanded following a cocaine bust on a go-fast boat. President Ali also met with United Airlines executives following the inaugural flight. Minister Edge Hill oversaw infrastructure projects in Region 9, and the government bolstered crime prevention efforts with a donation of an all-terrain vehicle to the police force. Moreover, Mohammed provided generous donations to support a photographer and Sand Creek Village. Stay tuned for further updates. Please remember to like, share and subscribe to our channel for more news. Pedestrian fatally struck as minibus collides with house in Uflucht. An early morning commute turned tragic as a fatal accident occurred around 319 HRS today, Tuesday, on the public road in Uflucht, West Coast Demerara, claiming the life of 51-year-old Nicholas Kelawan. The accident involved minibus number BZZ 1192, driven by a 29-year-old resident of Kaikin Street, North Ruimvelt, Georgetown, and pedestrian Nicholas Kelawan, who resided at Lot 155 Ocean View Yudlugt, WCD. Additionally, the minibus was carrying four teenagers and a 20-year-old passenger at the time of the incident. Preliminary investigations revealed that the minibus was traveling east along the northern drive lane of Yudlugt Public Road at a high speed when the driver alleged encountering a sudden U-turn by an unidentified motor car, swerving to avoid a collision. In the process, the minibus collided with the pedestrian standing on the southern grass parapet adjacent to the road. The impact of the collision caused the pedestrian to fall onto the road surface, sustaining fatal injuries, while the minibus driver and occupants also suffered injuries. Public-spirited individuals at the scene promptly rendered assistance, transporting the injured to the Leonora Cottage Hospital for medical attention. Tragically, the pedestrian was pronounced dead upon arrival at the hospital by attending medical personnel. The minibus driver, after receiving treatment for injuries, was taken into custody to assist with ongoing investigations. Meanwhile, the occupants of the minibus were admitted to the Leonora Hospital for observation and further medical care. The body of the deceased has been transferred to Ezekiel Funeral Home, pending a post-mortem examination. Authorities continue to probe the circumstances surrounding the incident as they work to determine the events leading up to the fatal collision. Appointment of new leadership at Guyana Energy Conference and Supply Chain Expo The Secretariat of the Guyana Energy Conference and Supply Chain Expo is thrilled to announce the appointment of Farisa Hanif as the new Media and Operations Director and Kiana Wilberg as the new Chief Executive Officer. With their combined wealth of experience and innovative vision, Hanif and Wilberg are set to lead the Secretariat into an exciting new era of growth and influence. Farisa Hanif brings a wealth of experience in journalism and media management, having served in various leadership roles within the Guyana Press Association GPA, from 2014 to 2020. Her extensive expertise in media and operations management, coupled with her strategic thinking and dedication to excellence, will undoubtedly enhance the Secretariat's outreach efforts and operational efficiency. Kiana Wilberg, with her proven track record in energy sector knowledge and investigative journalism, is well positioned to lead the Secretariat as the Chief Executive Officer. Her passion for the energy sector, combined with her balanced and professional approach, underscores her commitment to contributing meaningfully to Guyana's oil and gas industry. As the Secretariat embarks on a trajectory of growth and expansion, it remains committed to its core mission of serving as a leading think tank on issues shaping the growth and sustainability of Guyana's economy. Under the guidance of Hanif and Wilberg, the Secretariat will continue to facilitate crucial discussions, drive meaningful collaborations, and champion solutions that propel Guyana towards a prosperous future. The Chairman and Secretariat express their gratitude to the outgoing Chief Executive Officer, Kurt Babulal, for his contributions over the past three years. Mr. Babulal will transition to lead other projects within the GEO integrated group of companies.
three injured in Easter Monday brawl at Perseverance Beach. A violent altercation at Perseverance Beach, Essequibo Coast, on Easter Monday left three individuals injured, two of whom are brothers. Leon Thomas, 24, and Delroy Thomas, 22, both hailing from Kuru Kuru Sosdike Linden Highway, sustained stab wounds around their bodies at approximately 20.00 HRS. The alleged assailant, Sherwin Stoll, a 19-year-old resident of underneaming Sand Pit, Essequibo Coast, also suffered injuries during the incident. According to police reports, a dispute arose between the Thomas brothers and Stoll, leading to a physical altercation. Subsequently, Stoll departed for a nearby bar to purchase beverages. However, tensions escalated as the Thomas brothers armed themselves with knives and confronted Stoll at the bar, allegedly stabbing him in the hand. In response, Stoll reportedly disarmed the brothers and inflicted multiple stab wounds on them before they collapsed to the ground. Authorities arrived at the scene and transported the injured parties to the Suddy Public Hospital, where they were admitted as stable patients despite being unconscious upon arrival. The police have launched an investigation into the incident, aiming to determine the exact sequence of events and the circumstances leading to the altercation. President Ali holds meeting with energy sector stakeholders and expressed dissatisfaction with GPL performance. Earlier today, President Dr. Irfan Ali convened a meeting with the Board of Directors and Management of Guyana Power and Light Incorporated GPL, Power Producers and Distributors Incorporated PPDI, and Warsila at State House. During the meeting, President Ali expressed his dissatisfaction with GPL's performance, citing inherited challenges stemming from a lack of maintenance and investments during the period 2015 to 2020. The discussion also addressed concerns regarding the exponential growth in demand, aging assets, and the absence of redundancy in transmission infrastructure. Acknowledging the critical nature of the issues, President Ali scheduled a follow-up meeting later in the day to delve deeper into potential solutions. Notably, the government has already initiated discussions with UK Export Finance UKEF, to explore financing options for improving transmission infrastructure. Furthermore, President Ali urged the utility to explore alternative options for providing bridging energy to meet increasing demand while awaiting the completion of the gas-fired power plant. It is anticipated that demand will rise by approximately 30 MW this year, underscoring the urgency for proactive measures to address energy needs effectively. Two men charged and remanded following cocaine bust on the GoFast boat. In a significant development following the recent interception of a GoFast boat carrying parcels of cocaine, two individuals found on board have been formally charged and remanded to prison. Jose Felix Lindor and Javier Perez appeared before Magistrate Alicia George at the Leonora Magistrates Court on Tuesday to face charges related to the bust, which involved a staggering 536 kilograms of cocaine. Both Lindor and Perez pleaded not guilty to the charges brought against them. However, the magistrate ordered them to be remanded to prison until their next court appearance scheduled for May 10, 2024. The arrests came after a joint operation conducted by the Customs Anti-Narcotic Unit CANU, and the Guyana Defense Force Coast Guard last Friday in Virginogan, East Bank Essequibo. During the operation, authorities intercepted the Gigo Fast boat and proceeded to conduct a thorough search. Upon inspection, law enforcement officials discovered a substantial quantity of narcotics, along with additional items, including fuel. The total amount of cocaine seized amounted to a staggering 536 kilograms or approximately 1,181 pounds, with an estimated street value of 2.6 million US dollars. The apprehension and subsequent charging of Lindor and Perez represent a significant step in the ongoing efforts to combat drug trafficking in the region. Authorities continue to maintain vigilance and conduct operations aimed at disrupting illicit activities and ensuring the safety and security of Guyana's borders. President Ali meets with United Airlines executives following inaugural flight. Today, President Dr. 
Irfan Ali held a meeting with executives from United Airlines following the commencement of the airline's operations between Georgetown and Houston, Texas, USA, which began yesterday. During the meeting, President Ali emphasized Guyana's rich tourism offerings and encouraged United Airlines to explore opportunities to incorporate locally sourced products into their services. This aligns with efforts to promote Guyana's economy and showcase its unique offerings to international travelers. The visiting team from United Airlines included Senior Vice President of Global Network Planning and Alliances, Patrick Quayle, Senior Manager of Latin America and Caribbean Network Planning, Tom Kozlowski, and Director of International Regulatory and Government Affairs, Annale Avancina. They also presented President Ali with a model of the United Airlines aircraft, symbolizing the partnership between the airline and Guyana. United Airlines is set to operate four flights per week from Georgetown to Houston, providing travelers with convenient connections to numerous other destinations. Notably, the inaugural flight was piloted by Guyanese pilot Ravi Shankar Ramshar, marking a significant milestone for both the airline and the nation. Minister Itch Hill oversees infrastructure projects in Region 9. Minister of Public Works, Bishop Juan Edge Hill, reaffirmed the government's commitment to advancing infrastructure development in Guyana during his recent visit to several ongoing projects in Region 9, Upper Tacutuesequibo. Among the projects inspected were the construction of internal roads in Lethem, SD. Ignatius, and the Piara Bridge, which is currently at the halfway mark of completion. The Piara Bridge holds particular significance as it represents the final piece of infrastructure needed to complete the Lethem to Kurupukari Corridor. During his visit, Minister Edge Hill emphasized the importance of adhering to contract specifications and urged contractors to manage the generation of dust and debris effectively during road construction. He also stressed the need for timely project completion to minimize disruptions to residents and ensure the efficient delivery of infrastructure improvements. Residents of the respective areas were encouraged to actively monitor the progress of the projects and report any concerns or complaints to the ministry, underscoring the government's commitment to transparency and accountability in infrastructure development. Additionally, Minister Itch Hill convened a meeting with representatives of the Aranapita Village Council, project contractors, and ministry officials involved in the rehabilitation of the Aranapita Valley Village Road. The purpose of the meeting was to assess the progress of the project and address any issues raised by stakeholders to ensure the timely and satisfactory completion of the road rehabilitation efforts. Minister Edge Hill's hands-on approach to overseeing infrastructure projects reflects the government's dedication to advancing development initiatives that benefit communities across Guyana, particularly in remote regions like Region 9. Government bolsters crime prevention efforts with donation of all-terrain vehicle to police force. Today, April 2, 2024, at the ministry's Brickdam office, Honorable Minister of Home Affairs, Mr. Robson Ben, reaffirmed the government's dedication to enhancing crime prevention and intelligence gathering efforts in Guyana's remote regions by presenting an all-terrain vehicle, ATV, to the Guyana police force. The ATV, specifically designed to navigate the vast and rugged terrains of the hinterland, symbolizes a strategic investment aimed at strengthening law enforcement agencies' capabilities in combating criminal activities across interior mining locations. In his remarks, Minister Ben underscored the importance of collaborative efforts in the fight against crime, particularly in remote areas. He emphasized, assisting the Guyana police force in their crime-fighting efforts, especially in interior mining locations, is paramount. This ATV donation reflects our commitment to supporting law enforcement in accessing hard-to-reach areas. Commissioner of Police, Mr. Clifton Hicken, expressed gratitude for the donation, acknowledging its timeliness and potential to significantly enhance crime-fighting capabilities in interior locations. He stated, I am honored to receive this donation from Minister Ben. It arrives at a critical juncture and will greatly bolster our crime-fighting capabilities, particularly in the interior regions. Mr. Hicken highlighted the importance of the ATV's deployment in Region 7, stating, This timely gesture will provide a substantial boost to our law enforcement efforts. The ATV will enable us to extend our reach beyond the 72-mile mark, ensuring comprehensive coverage of the region. 
he also emphasized ongoing partnerships with organizations like the Guyana Gold and Diamond Miners Association (GGDMA) and community members, noting the continued effectiveness of the Hinterland Intelligence Community (HIC). Mr. Hicken stressed the importance of broadening partnerships to effectively combat crime in Guyana's hinterland regions. The handover ceremony, attended by Mr. Rashi Das, head of CPG, signifies the government's unwavering commitment to safeguarding the welfare and security of all Guyanese citizens, particularly those in remote and vulnerable areas. It highlights the effectiveness of strategic partnerships between law enforcement agencies and community stakeholders in the ongoing. Mohammed supports photographer and Sand Creek Village with generous donations. In a heartwarming gesture of generosity, Mr. Mohammed has made two significant contributions, providing professional photographer Mortimer Bavil with a new camera and donating a generator to the Amerindian community of Sand Creek in Region 9. Mortimer Bavil, a well-known photographer based in Georgetown, has received a brand new camera from Mr. Mohammed. With six years of experience capturing moments along the Kingston Seawall and the Botanical Garden, Bavil's work has earned him recognition for his dedication to preserving cherished memories. The new camera not only enhances the quality of his work, but also enables him to expand his services, now capable of capturing and recording moments for his clientele. Bavil's operating hours in the garden and seawalls allow him to cater to clients effectively, with images processed on the spot. Meanwhile, Team Mohammed's generous donation of a generator to the Sand Creek community in the deep South Rupununi of Region 9 has provided essential support during the village's 7th annual rodeo. The generator powered the public address, PA, system and provided lighting for the night games, ensuring the success of the event. Mr. Richard Gomez, on behalf of the rodeo committee, received the generator, expressing gratitude for the support. The Sand Creek Rodeo, supported by Mr. Mohammed saw several villages competing in various activities, including bull riding, bareback bronco, calf roping, and cow milking. All proceeds generated from the event will contribute to the development of the community, reflecting Mr. Mohammed's commitment to supporting initiatives in Region 9. Additionally, the generator donated by Team Mohammed will serve broader economic and social purposes within the community, further benefiting Sand Creek and its residents. Mr. Mohammed's philanthropic efforts exemplify his dedication to supporting individuals and communities, fostering growth, and enhancing quality of life for all.